Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Thursday, June 28, 2018. Let's begin looking at the eastern Pacific here, Tropical Storm Amelia, way out here to the south and west of the Baja and Mexico proper, the mainland part of Mexico here, Pacific Mexico, and then Invest Area 96E, uh, I believe that's the number four. Remember, we use the numbers, or the National Hurricane Center does, 90 through 99 in the letter E for East Pacific. It's technically uh, EP for Eastern Pacific. In the, in the Atlantic, we use the letter L, like 91L or 99L or whatever. And so this is Eastern Pacific area of interest, you know, whatever, uh, 96, I do believe. And it has a really good chance at developing over the next several days. If we click on the symbol here for Amelia, notice that it is not forecast to become a hurricane in its life cycle here. And I was mentioning this yesterday that these storms, these systems that are forming, uh, a lot of talk about it on Twitter and elsewhere that, wow, the Pacific's very busy and it's the most busy that it's been since 1980 or something. And okay, that's fine. But this system, uh, just like Daniel before will fail to become a hurricane. So the quantity is definitely exceeding the quality as of late in terms of intensity. And these things matter because there has to be a reason behind it. And we will look at that a little bit more, uh, maybe in tomorrow's update, uh, talking about the East Pacific more in focus, so to speak. So here uh, we see the track away from Mexico, so no big deal at all from Amelia. And if you look at the satellite presentation, uh, I mean, this looks like something we would see in the Atlantic sometimes, right? Where you have it sheared from the east there and the uh, convection is being blown off to the west side of the circulation. So it's kind of exposed in here. And that's not a healthy sign for a system to develop. So here it is yet another, uh, you know, after Daniel didn't become a hurricane, this probably won't either. Uh, so that's interesting. There has to be some background hindrances going on so that despite the favorable conditions and the fact that we've had so many in a row, et cetera, um, it's just not going to be that strong. So to me, it's very curious. I'll get over it and move on. All right, so this is a beautiful shot here, the Go 16 um, image here. You can see the African dust. This also has had a lot of talk, uh, and rightfully so. It's both uh, interesting to see that it spreads from the coast of Africa, where it originates from the Sahara, all across the tropical Atlantic through the Caribbean, now reaching Central America, and eventually parts of the southeast and the western Gulf of Mexico to include Texas. So you're going to have some beautiful red sunsets. So if we had two suns in the sky, like Luke Skywalker on Tatooine and A New Hope, you would have two beautiful red sunsets, but we only have one, one sun in the sky, locally anyway, 93 million miles away. We only get one, so enjoy it while you can. I guess you could Photoshop it and probably even do augmented reality and just fake it if you like and have two red sunsets. Whatever your heart desires, the African dust will allow that. And it's fairly normal to see it this time of year. I, have, I don't think I've seen such a widespread outbreak this early, but it's June and the climatological background state is not favorable anyway, so let there be dust. Uh, if this was happening at the end of August, then I think it would be a very big symptom that something is going on that would shut down the hurricane season almost entirely, but it's only the end of June. This is fairly typical. You get a lot of fast trades out here and these large areas of Saharan dust that come off uh, not too unusual that I'm seeing, but it, it is spectacular to see, no doubt. And in the background, speaking of background states, plenty of precipitable moisture. I showed this yesterday, so here's the latest update. Very uh, well-defined tropical wave right there. There's another one there. And they do raise the precipitable water levels just a little bit as they traverse across the tropical Atlantic. And let me just go back to the other image uh, this tropical wave right here, you can clearly see in the imagery, if I can get it to come up, right there. There it is. That's the tropical wave, and you can see broad turning with it, but the atmosphere is so dry out here 
and the water temperatures are cooler than average uh, for the most part. But I'm going to show you something in a minute that's going to kind of make you go, hmm. Uh, and it's just not conditionally favorable out there. That's why we don't have long track hurricanes in June. There's a reason. And so there you go. But I just think it's neat when you can see that in the real world there, so to speak. I mean, this is the real world too, but this is a satellite picture and you can clearly see the outline of that tropical wave. All right, so moving along, this, uh, remember, twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays, this particular product updates, and I wanted to show you this because back on June 4th, when the hurricane season was just getting started, we had this very cold, relative to average ring, horseshoe shape, and it does continue on up into the far north Atlantic, uh, of cold anomalies, you know, below the long-term average. And that was June 4th. This is the update today. You ready? <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. I mean, clearly the tropical Atlantic is warming according to this product. Now, there is some talk I've seen on a message board that this product is flawed because of the background data set, et cetera. You know, what is your reference point to be an anomaly? If something's going to deviate from normal, what is the normal? What is the data set that comprises, quote, normal, right? And I've seen some talk that this isn't very useful, but I'm thinking it, it does match up fairly well to uh, things that we've seen. For example, if uh, you were to plow a hurricane right through here, uh, and then you look at it a couple of days later, you're going to see that blue streak right through there. And so, I don't know, there's just, I've used this product for several years because I like the consistency of it. And I will do some research to find out if it truly is flawed versus some other methodologies. There's the CDAS, uh, the Reynolds method, you know, where you have an average over a week. But none of that matters when you just look at the very basics that you went from this to that. It can't be that flawed so that you don't trust that. Um, but there you go. Nevertheless, there it is. And from the last, you know, what is that, 24 days, so a little bit more than three weeks, that's a pretty significant change. And I want to point out something else, too. Here's the Gulf of Mexico. And you notice all the above normal uh, sea surface temperature anomalies there. Let's zoom into the Gulf. And you can see, and this is interesting, too, trying to verify you know, how accurate this is. So here is your above normal area, mainly the northeast. Um, roughly half of the Gulf is fairly substantially above normal. All right, well, what does that look like in actual temperatures? And here it is. This is the update. This is always a day behind. So this is June 27th. And look at that outline right there. I mean, it's absolutely spot on, you know, from what we showed right, whoops, right there. See, and so I tend to trust this based on things like that, that I can verify, well, this is the actual sea surface temperatures. And look, that's a huge area that's 29 degrees Celsius. I mean, we're talking about 84, 85 degrees. You know, 30 Celsius is roughly 85. And that's a lot of 30 sea water right through there. 30 degrees Celsius, all right, right off the coast of Mississippi. And some of that, and, and this is shelf water all through here, but this is getting into the deeper part of the Gulf, not like way down here, I know, but we're going to need to start looking at the upper ocean heat content fairly soon, and uh, this could be important later in the season, you know, even with homegrown systems that develop quickly and come up or whatever. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, I try to play detective here and try to see if things make sense to me, and when I see, you know, look at even there, the gradient right there, all that very warm water relative to average. And then you look at the actual sea surface temperatures and what's there. There it is right there. So I tend to trust it um, from just observation and over the years. So back to this, it will be really interesting to see over the next couple of weeks. Because remember, I have been pointing out the European EPS, the Ensemble Prediction Center, system, I keep saying center, it's not a C, it's an S, system indicating lower pressures throughout the deep tropics over the next week to 10 days, 
and that would ease the gas pedal up a bit on those trade winds. So I think we're starting to see the fruit that that tree has bared, so to speak, that the lower pressures we've seen as of late throughout this area, uh, and you know that's partly because of the passage of the Madden-Julian oscillation that we saw, uh, but it all starts to matter because unless you really re-crank the big high sitting out here and blast those trades, the water temperatures are just going to go up. And even if they're not going to go up relative to average, in other words, if they don't continue to do this where they anomalously warm, they're still going up because it's still only June and they're just naturally going to go up, I guess, unless an amazing amount of dry air uh, and, and just strong trades race across here, which I'm not seeing in any of the forecasts. I should have put that graphic up. What I am seeing is a trade burst out this way over the next few weeks that will start to at least slow down the progression of this warming event. And we're getting, you know, two months from now, just 60 days, we're going to be knocking on the door of the peak of the hurricane season, and things like this are really, really going to start to matter. So just interesting, kind of caught my eye, and I figured I'd bring it up. Nothing to be alarmed about uh, just yet, but those changes, you know, the Atlantic's not getting colder, uh, it's getting warmer. So, hmm, we'll see. Uh, maybe it'll change back in three more weeks. You just never know. All right, that's it for me for today. Have a great rest of your Thursday. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again tomorrow.